welcome back to the channel today we are looking at um, the same topic global issues in civic education the subtopic we're looking at today is foreign aid so what is foreign aid well uh, foreign aid is the international transfer of funds goods and services in form of loans and grants from one country to another so it can be money it can be for example we can exchange doctors or we can exchange maybe even uh, services we can exchange maybe goods like uh, machinery that we need so it's it's from one country to another now there are two types of foreign aid that we can find any guesses of any of these uh, types there are two that's a clue okay so we have one there is bilateral aid and two we have multilateral aid so there are two types of foreign aid one is bilateral and the other one is multilateral so let's look at bilateral aid what is bilateral aid well bilateral aid is assistance from one country to another so for example zambia can receive aid from for example japan it can receive aid from uh, sweden or from the usa or this is bilateral and we can tell from the uh, the two letters by that is b and i which means two so two countries exchanging assistance one country giving assistance to another so that is bilateral now um, zambia has received a lot of aid from different countries not only these that i've mentioned here but also even from the uk from china from um, russia from a lot of countries so that is bilateral aid the second type is multilateral aid so multilateral aid is assistance from international agencies which have been formed by several countries so these agencies do not belong to one particular country instead they are formed by a number of countries coming together and forming these agencies and then these agencies are now able to help countries in need so for example some of the agencies that we have here there's the african development bank we have the international monetary fund we have the world bank and also the european union so these are agencies that have been formed by different countries coming together so um, um foreign aid has got forms and these forms I'll give you a clue if you're able to guess. There are three forms. Okay. So there's grants as our first form that we're going to look at under aid. So grants are gifts from international agencies to a government or from one government to another. These grants, you do not pay them back. It's a gift. I'm sure we can tell from the term gift. It's something that you give and do not want it back. You do not ask for it back so some governments are able to give aid to other governments or to other countries agencies are able to give aid to countries and do not want do not um, they are not going to get it back and then we also have loans loans are transfers of funds goods and services from one financial entity to another but the the tricky part with loans is you have to pay it back and usually it comes with interest it can be high interest or low interest this brings us to the two forms of loans that we can find one it's a hard loan which is a loan that you give with a very high interest so if a country gets a loan a hard loan it they have to pay back with a high interest rate and then we have a soft loan which is a low rate loan that you get and the country that gets this loan pays with a low interest rate and the third form of aid is tied aid. Now, tied aid can be a loan or a grant, but it comes with strings or conditions attached to it. So it can be, for example, you you um, for example, the recipient country may be required to spend, for example, a loan that you get from the donor country on a specified project or 
they will you you as the country that is receiving the aid you have to allow the country giving you the donor aid to build for example a military base in your country so that is an example that we can give there are a lot of other examples that we can give others may demand that you give us some portion of land others may different different things so in this example we are saying they give you to spend that money on a specified project or you allow the donor country to build a military base so those are two examples that we've given now when we look at foreign aid there has been debate about foreign aid others have said it's good others have said it's bad i don't know what you think but each of us have got their own opinion um i think it's not all bad it's it's good and it's bad also so let's look at the arguments for those that are supporting foreign aid so others have said it provides foreign capital that we need to supplement our local investment resources so if we don't have enough uh, resources to invest we need to borrow from people that are able to afford to give us the second point is that it provides more foreign exchange if the loan or the grant is invested in a project which is going to give capital goods so if it produces it's going to give us enough foreign exchange for our country to benefit the third point is that it provides new technology and skills <coughs> excuse me it provides new technologies and skills which the local people can later acquire by means of training so when they bring that new technology they are going to teach our people on how to use those uh, equipments they are going to uh, give skills to the local people and when they learn they are going to benefit because that also will be used in later years or later times when that is needed the fourth point is that it gives foreign aid which alleviates famine in case of a natural disaster for example if there are floods or droughts or even earthquakes i'm sure we have seen the conditions that have been happening in uh, sudan where there has been a lot of um, droughts no rains for quite a number of years and a lot of people have died because of hunger and when countries give aid to that country they are elevating the famine which is going on in that country we have seen earthquake that has happened in the middle east we have seen uh, floods in uh, mozambique where a lot of people died so all that when we give food aid it helps countries that are going through famine and the fifth and last point on the arguments for foreign aid is that foreign aid promotes international cooperation between the donor countries and the recipient countries which is true because when you receive aid you for you to receive the aid from those countries you are in cooperation that's why in the first place you are able to agree on the receiving and the giving of the aid so those are the arguments for foreign aid then we go to arguments that are saying foreign aid is not good so one we are saying the loans and grants are tied to donor to the donor countries and they have to be spent on buying goods and services from those countries that give you and sometimes when you buy a when you buy these things from those countries the goods or the services from those countries that donate to you they are maybe expensive or of lower quality not all the time but sometimes and that is a disadvantage to the country that is receiving the donor aid and the second point is that the loans and grants these you find that sometimes when they give you the aid it is tied to projects and you can only spend it by the project that has been agreed upon with the donor country so this undermines the economic and political independence of the recipient country i think that's very true also so the third point is that the profits from these foreign investments are usually externalized and we rarely invest them back into the country which is receiving the aid so it goes to those countries and rarely coming back 
at home where the money was uh, to be spent the fourth is loans that are repaid with interest so you find that the larger the loan the larger the debt service burden you suffer a, a huge service burden debt service burden you have to pay back every month every year lots of money and it worsens the debt burden especially for third world countries like zambia the rich countries become richer and the poor countries become poorer i think this statement a lot of people agree with this one why because as you service that debt you find yourself failing to give reasonable salaries to your workers giving to the civil servants or even just improving the the living standards of the people in your country so that is the fourth point we have the fifth point which is saying foreign aid promotes the dependence syndrome in the recipient country so we receive this aid as good as we think it is sometimes it makes us people who depend on the countries where we get the aid from and without which we always feel like we are not going to survive without that aid the sixth point is recipient countries may be forced to support the donor country in foreign policy to receive aid so sometimes they will give a condition to say you have to support us sometimes you, they don't even give you that condition but you feel you are obliged to support that donor country so in that way it's not a good thing and lastly the technical assistance that we receive is not always something that is appropriate or beneficial to our needs and we may re we may be required to import expensive machinery from the countries that are donating to us so we are at a disadvantage if that happens so that those are the arguments that we find against foreign aid i'm sure we have a lot more um disadvantages or advantages of foreign aid we can put them in in the comments and we'll go over them as we go through this so um the next topic that we're going to look at is uh, international not the topic the subtopic it's international trade and the world bank so thank you for being with me i'll see you next time